So in this video, I wanted to once again discuss a somewhat unusual proposition that was made approximately 10 years ago in regards to the origin of more complex life on planet Earth compared to some of the more modern propositions, and specifically a potential existence of relatively complex multicellular life as far back as 2.1 billion years ago, or roughly around 1.5 billion years before we actually think complex life appeared. And if correct, this would have huge ramifications for a lot of different studies including exobiology or the study of potential alien life or the existence of alien life out there, but I guess more importantly, would actually suggest that at some point in the past, multicellular complex life actually failed, and it was most likely the second attempt that eventually succeeded, resulting in, well, us. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. In this video, we're going to talk about a few studies and a few discoveries coming out of Africa, and specifically the formation known as Francvillian B formation located in Gabon. An ancient geological formation that's already strange for a lot of other reasons. For example, it's actually the location of so-called Oklo Mine, which is literally the best known natural nuclear reactor where natural nuclear fission occurs inside the planet just because of the uranium ore that's deposited in just the right way. This is something we're going to be discussing in some of the other videos, so you know, subscribe and stuff. But for now we're basically talking about something else discovered in this geological formation that resembles something like this. But here I guess let's start with a bit of a history and the original discovery. All of this started back in 2008 and specifically by a professor Al Albani, whose team discovered these unusual three-dimensional shapes in many different locations in the West African country of Gabon. And strangely enough, many of them were sort of three-dimensional, resembled very bizarre ear-like shapes, and many of them were actually kind of large, approximately 7 inches or even larger across. And initially, and also very cautiously, this was proposed to be potentially first signs of some kind of a eukaryotic life, and most importantly, multicellular life earliest fossils from approximately 2.1 billion years ago. Now, as we've discussed in some of the previous videos about animal life, this is way, way older than anything we know of. You can find some of these videos in the description, but in essence, we think that most of the multicellular life very likely kicked off approximately 600 to 700 million years ago, possibly following the last glaciation period and following a lot of unusual experimentation with different sizes and shapes, where a lot of different jellyfish-like creatures and a lot of different shrimp-like creatures started to appear everywhere. And though there have been signs of potential other animal life from even before that, a lot of this evidence so far is kind of sparse. But these unusual radial structures, all of which were inside 2.1 billion year old rocks, eventually made it into his publication, but were not particularly known and were obviously disputed by a lot of scientists. Although here this was not a particularly heated discussion, it was actually a relatively civil discussion among scientists. But then in 2014, I guess um, somewhat by accident, all of this went viral when the Natural History Museum of Vienna basically named this Gabonionta, an experiment of life and a new type of life that nobody ever knew existed, literally making this go viral overnight. And this became a huge deal, a lot of different press talked about this, and it suddenly became a sensation it never was for previous six years. And obviously after this, a lot of scientists started to try to disprove this, providing a lot of counter evidence. And though El Albani, the original professor, continued his research and still suggested that this was maybe life, his actual wording was really not that strong. He was definitely open to interpretations. But for the next few years, more and more studies started to come out, essentially providing a lot of counter evidence that this was just a geological formation and was essentially a kind of a pseudofossil, which by the way is also super important for our studies of Mars. You can learn about this in some of the previous videos in the description. But here's for example one counter argument presented in a study you can find below. A lot of these show somewhat similar morphological formations, but this was actually formed by abiotic processes. This is a geological formation and not life. These are 1.1 billion year old sediments discovered in the Lake Michigan and a part of the Copper Harbor Formation. And so even though here biological origins were questioned by many studies, El Albani was actually discovering additional evidence too. For example, he even found evidence of something possibly moving through the sediment around the same time. And these signs of mobility are obviously kind of difficult to explain. 
Once again, these were large structures. These were structures inside this ancient rock. And they were showing something that's not microscopic, moving through the ancient sediment. And many of these even appeared as unusual strings of pearls that would be kind of difficult to explain if this was a purely geological formation. Many of these also showed three-dimensional growth and actually coordinated growth as if something was growing on purpose, with further additional studies even discovering more features, including those unusual disks, that seem to have unusual concentrations of certain elements, such as zinc, compared to the surrounding sediment. This was actually discovered in some of the recent papers, as recent as 2023, and this implied that there was some kind of a biochemistry that's surprisingly similar to a typical, more complex eukaryotic cell. And so if these were biological, they could have been actually breathing oxygen. And so the question was obviously, so what was this? Was this some kind of a abiological formation, or basically just geology, or were these signs of first multicellular life on planet Earth? Well, surprisingly, a lot of more recent evidence, especially chemical evidence, started to point at these being strange collections of different cells, possibly similar to a typical microbial mat. A famous example here is a stromatolite that we've actually discussed in one of the recent videos in the description. And more importantly, these unusual formations seem to have disappeared in the overlying black shale, suggesting a potential extinction. With the implication being that these creatures appeared during the Great Oxygenation event, approximately 2.1 billion years ago, and then disappeared when the oxygen levels dropped during the Logamunti excursion event. But the real reason we're discussing this today is because of the most recent study, released in August of 2024, and this here provides us with a potential explanation for why this even existed. Here this explains the geology of this bizarre region and basically suggests that this involved some kind of a continental collision producing a lot of underwater volcanoes which suddenly formed an extremely rich in nutrients laboratory for a lot of these organisms to suddenly evolve. For example, today we know that phosphorus is crucial for evolution, especially for the transition from the single cell to multicell organisms. We know that marine phosphorus is correlated with seawater oxygen concentrations and also with the biological evolution around 635 million years ago. And here the scientists discover something extremely similar. Sudden increase in oxygen, a huge jump in phosphorus, and basically extremely similar conditions to those 630 million years ago when we know complex life started to definitely appear. And the implication here is that this was some kind of a very unusual localized environment that produced a kind of a biological bubble where for a few hundred million years the conditions led to high oxygenation, a huge production of a lot of different nutrients, and literally a kind of a first biological laboratory for life to try to evolve into something else. With the other discovery from the study suggesting that the amount of nutrients and energy produced here would be just enough for a lot of more complex body shapes to start evolving. But since many of them could have been basically like jellyfish or soft body animals, only a tiny fraction of them would survive in different fossils. And obviously this is still going to be a very contentious proposition and a lot of scientists are going to be arguing with this as well. If one day confirmed and if this is actually what really happened, this suddenly has a lot of implications for the origin of life and more importantly for the potential origin of alien life. Because here what this kind of implies is that Earth might have had a kind of a two-step evolution of complex life. It seems to have tried to evolve something 2.1 billion years ago, but that something failed. With all this multicellular life very likely disappearing and only single cells surviving. But because this first step followed a major rise in atmospheric oxygen 2.1 billion years ago, with the second one following the second rise in oxygen, and of course the sudden rise in nutrients in certain regions on the planet, it means that something like this can definitely happen elsewhere, especially since it happened at least twice on planet Earth. Which of course implies that something similar could happen elsewhere, with maybe some other planet experiencing multiple failed steps of evolution of life, until it finally kicks off for one reason or another. And obviously why exactly it succeeded 600 million years ago and not 2.1 billion years ago is currently unclear. But if complexity of life arises every time there's a jump in oxygen and a sudden introduction of nutrients, this would definitely have huge implications in the search for extraterrestrial life. For example, there's a very high chance we might discover something similar happening on planets like Mars 
and maybe even certain moons of Jupiter and Saturn. And obviously, if correct, this would dramatically increase the chance for complex, multicellular life to exist outside of planet Earth in other star systems. It would imply that these unusual periods of sudden nutrient and oxygen enrichment can actually be kind of common and can sometimes result in failure, but sometimes produce complex life. But, at least for now, we still have to take this with a grain of salt. Despite multiple signs and despite multiple pieces of evidence, this can still be interpreted in other ways. For example, as I mentioned, some of those fossils do resemble inorganic fossils discovered elsewhere, and some of these chemical signatures can actually be completely irrelevant. And so it will probably take at least a few more years to basically determine what this is all about. And so until future studies, we're just basically going to leave it at that. Right now, it looks like this could be complex life from 2.1 billion years ago, but it could also be just, I guess, rocks. And so stay tuned, subscribe, and come back to see some of the future videos if you want to find out how all of this turns out in the end. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.